Shepherd's family, love each other and pray for one another. And uh, I, you don't know what a blessing it is to me uh, to, to be able to have a Facebook page where people can go on there and put their prayer request, as odd as that sounds, and, and me be able to pray for you uh, by going on there and seeing what you put. And uh, seeing all the response, people text them back and comment and saying they're praying, and all the likes and stuff like that's a blessing to me. And I, I, I do not, I, I don't know what I would do without the people of God and uh, people to pray for me. I don't want, I don't want to know what I would do without the people of God. And uh, so I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for what God's doing here. And uh, boy, it's it's noise that God's in the house at New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, God's doing a great work and so thankful just to be here, just to be a part of what God's doing. And uh, if you have a copy of God's Word, let's turn to 2 Kings chapter number 6. Now I will say this, uh, I will say this, this is not, uh, this is not a message that I would preach uh, normally on the road. This is not something that I would, uh, I would say is, uh, an evangelistic style message, anything like that at all. Um, but this is, this is something the Lord's put heavy on my heart for us uh, as the church. And uh, I believe tonight that I'm preaching for the most part to the core people. I'm preaching to the backbone of New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, God's doing a great work and God's moving. And I believe this would be appropriate for tonight. Second Kings chapter number 6. Uh, we'll begin reading in verse number 1, Second Kings. I do want to say thank you to Pastor Daniel for the opportunity, allowing me to preach what a blessing it is to be able to stand here once again behind the pulpit that he stands every Sunday and preaches the Word of God. So thankful for that. What a blessing that is. Second Kings chapter 6. Notice what your Bible says in verse number 1. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee, is too straight for us, means it's too small. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. One said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he, so he went, uh, went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. The man of God said, Where fell it? He showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand, and he took it. I want to go back and read verse number five real quick. Then we'll get into the message God has for us. Lay down some context. Notice what your Bible says in verse five. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. With the help of God, I want to pray and preach to you for the next few moments on this thought the dangers of losing the axe head. The dangers of losing the axe head. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for the privilege to stand where no mortal man can stand alone. God, I pray for the next few moments of time. God, may you illuminate my mind, allow me to remember what I have studied, bring to pass what you have put within my heart, God, for this night. These people have not come to this place to hear from Jay Taylor, but God, they have come to hear from heaven. So God, I pray for the next few moments in time. God, may you seal us in that vacuum. Lord, as Brother Ray prayed. God, I pray as our friend Brother Heath prays. God, squeeze out every ounce of your will. God, that everything that's done tonight, God, you would get glory for it. You would get honor for it. God, tonight we have come to this place. God, to learn from the truth of your word. I pray, God, you'd give us grace. Lord, I understand tonight 
right, God, that in my ability, Lord, I am nothing. God, I, I do not know anything, Lord. I'm an ignorant 19-year-old, God. Lord, when it comes to a lot of things, God, I pray tonight, God, that you'd give me wisdom beyond my ears. God, I pray, God, that you'd give me the ability, God, to speak beyond my ears. God, that these people would not be listening to me, but God, they would be listening to heaven. God, let me be the mouthpiece of heaven tonight for a little while. God, I pray, God, that we may not receive glory in ourselves, but God, we receive glory in the bloodstained Christ of cross at Calvary. God, touch our pastor tonight. God, we pray. Bless our friends at Trinity and our friends at surrounding churches that will preach the truth of your word. May you bless them and bless their churches. God, tonight we pray. Give us power and authority. God, give us grace. And Lord, for that we'll thank you. And it's in the name of Christ, our bloodstained Redeemer. We pray all of these things. Amen. And Amen. As we enter into the book of Second Kings, chapter number, as we enter into the book of Second Kings in general to deal with, most of you Bible readers understand what's going on. You know uh, what's happening. But uh, when we come into Second Kings, we find that Elijah and Elisha they have joined up together. They are now running together, as we would say, uh, doing the will of God, trying to uh, teach and to preach to young men and try to invest in the next generation. Generation. If you study out the life of Elijah, you know, of course, in 1 Kings chapter number 18, he's the man of God that prays the fire down from heaven. He's the man that does all of these great things. God uses him in a great way. He goes to the brook Cherith. We understand all of that. But if you study out the life of Elijah, what really interests me in his life is the fact that he, didn't, he never ceased to invest in the next generation. Everywhere Elijah went, there was a school of the prophets or there was a place where he would teach and he would preach the next generation of men of God and would, would, would encourage them and exhort them in the truth of God. As we enter into the book of 2 Kings and chapter number 2, we find that Elijah knows that his life is getting ready to be, uh, to be over. He knows that his time is coming to an end. He is getting ready to be offered. And he's telling Elisha these things. And we find in 2 Kings chapter number 2 that Elijah and Elisha they come to the river Jordan and they cross over the river Jordan and they're standing on the muddy bank of the river Jordan. Elijah looks at Elisha and he says Elisha is there anything that you desire? Is there anything that you would want? I'm getting ready to go and if there is something that you would want uh, I pray thee would you tell me so that God may give it to you. And we understand that Elisha, I'm paraphrasing all this now, Elisha looks at Elijah and he says there is one thing that I do need and that is a double portion. Elijah, I need a double portion of the touch that is on your life. I need a double portion of the hand of God that is on your life. And it would come to prove that in the days in which Elisha would live, he would need that double portion. As we find that in those moments the chariot of fire come down, comes down from heaven and takes up Elijah, the man of God. So now that mantle and now that burden has been put on Elisha to invest in the next generation. And if you study the word of God coming from chapter 2, when that mantle has fallen on the life of Elisha into chapter number 6, it's almost as if that's all Elisha does. It seems as if he's pouring in everywhere he goes. He's investing in the men of God. He's teaching the young men how to pray, how to exalt, how to ex uh, exalt Christ, how to exhort God, uh, exalt God, how to teach the truth of God's word. And he is doing these things everywhere he goes. And we find that here in 2 Kings chapter number 6, one of these schools that Elisha has started, one of these places where he is teaching and he is enabling these men, we find that they come to Elijah. Elijah and they say, Elisha, the place that we are dwelling, it is too small. We can no longer stay here. There's no more room. And Elisha, if we want to further the work of God, you got to catch this now. If we want to further the work of God, if we want to see God do more in the lives of these young men, if we want to see God in, uh, 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 save more sinners, if we want to see God convert more people, 
then we have got to do this thing. And we find that Elisha looks at these men and he says, okay. He says, let's further the work of God. Let's go do what we feel God wants us to do. And we find these men, they go out and they start to further the work of God. They are just doing what God would want them to do. And we find these men, these young men, they go out there and they're cutting down these beams. They're cutting down the wood. They're clearing out land. They're getting all the wood that they would need to build facilities. But listen to me now. There's a young man and he's out there in the field. He's cutting down wood. And all of the sudden, out of nowhere, while they are cutting down wood, there's a great cry. And there's a man that has lost his axe head. Listen to me now, friend. This man has now went from doing the work of God, doing what he is supposed to do, to now sitting on the sidelines, being put on a shelf. He is now no longer able to cut down wood. He is now no longer to see the work of God move forward. But now he has come to a halt. He has come to a stop because the axe head on the end of his handle has now fallen off. Listen to me now. He has went from seeing great results and great victory to now being put on the sidelines. He has went from seeing God do great things to now being put on a shelf. Listen to me. You say, how does that apply to me as the person of God? Or how does that apply to us as the people of God? You must understand the symbolism of the Word of God. In 2 Kings and chapter number 6, that axe head was a symbol of nothing less than the power of God or the Holy Ghost. Listen to me, friend. This man has now went from furthering the work of God. God's doing a great thing. It seems as if the Lord's just moving. God's blessing. And now it seems as if everything has been put on the back burner. As this man has lost the one thing that is allowing him to see results. He has lost the one thing that is allowing him to get the job done. Listen to me, dear child of God tonight. How does that apply to you? And it applies to us like this. We can go out and further the work of God as much as we want to. We can go knock on doors until we're blue in the face and hand out more tracts than we can print. We can pray in the prayer room as long as we want to. We can come to church. We can shout. We can sing. We can hoop. And we can holler. But you listen to me tonight, dear child of God, if there is not an axe head on the end of the handle at New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church, then there will be no results. There will be no conversions. There will be no change. There will be no difference. But it will be the same repetitive religious ceremony week after week, Sunday after Sunday, Monday after Monday in the prayer room, Thursday morning after Thursday morning, and we will get nothing done. We have to understand tonight that the only reason why we are seeing God do what He is doing, this is not a prideful statement or an arrogant statement at all, but you have to be a blind man to not see see that God is doing a great work in the church right now. And we must understand that the only reason why God is saving sinners and the only reason why God is using this place to invest in men of God week after week as they listen to live stream is because the hand of God and the axe head is on this place. It's tight and God is doing a work. Beams are failing everywhere we look. But we must understand tonight that if we lose that axe head, if we lose that cutting edge, if we lose that power and that authority that God has given us as the people of God, then surely we will fail tonight. There's a vision. There's a desire. Thank God for it. But if the axe head falls off, that vision and that desire will go with it. And where there is no vision, the people perish. I'm preaching to you tonight on this thought. The dangers of losing our axe head. 
as New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church or as you and your own life, the danger of losing the axe head. Number one, I want you to notice this. In the dangers of losing the axe head, first of all, there is a desolation that comes along with losing the axe head. One of the great dangers is the desolation. Verse 5, notice this. But as one was selling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. In the desolation, first of all, we see a pathway to desolation. This man's axe handle that he is cutting these trees down with, it did not just fall off the end of his axe out of nowhere. It did not decide just to jump off of the handle and fall into the water. That that is not how this worked. But we find that in order for this this axe head to fall off the handle, there was a process and a pathway that led to this. There was a process that had to take place for this axe head to eventually fly off. I wonder if maybe, just maybe, This man got so caught up in what he was doing that he forgot to check his handle. I remember whenever I was a little boy, I was over at my buddy's house. True story. His dad was big on, he, uh, for some reason, he just, he, it almost seemed like every Friday night he was having a bonfire or something. He just loved to do it. And so, of course, he had to cut a bunch of wood. And, and I remember one day he, he looked at me and my buddy, we was about 12 years old, and he said, I want y'all boys to go outside and try to cut some of that wood for me. And we went out there and we, we started cutting that wood, and we didn't, we didn't even know no better. We didn't hardly know what we was doing. We about killed ourselves trying to cut that wood, just to be honest with you. We didn't know what we was doing. We was trying to cut that wood, and we was cutting that wood. And, and, and his dad came outside, and he started cutting the wood. We started, we told him, we said, we said, I, we said, well, you know, it's cutting, but it's not cutting very good. I mean, it's cutting the wood, but we're not getting, and I, we, we looked at him, we said, maybe we're just not as strong as you. He looked at us and he said, well, let me try. And he tried and he was getting the same results, Brother Richie, that we were getting. And he looked at us and he said, no, he said, the problem ain't you. He said, the problem is the axe handle said the wedge has come loose on the axe handle. He said, see, boy, so there's, there's a process to this handle, be this axe handle, uh, this axe head being on this handle. And he said, one of the most important things is that wedge right there that's coming loose. He said, if that thing's come, he said, if that thing comes loose and finally comes out, and he said, that axe handle slips, that axe head slips off that handle, he said, somebody's gonna get hurt. He said, we gotta fix it. True story. What we did not, re- we were so caught up in what we were doing. We were so caught up in just trying to cut the wood so we could have a bonfire that we did not even realize that in a split moment in time, one of us could have got hurt, that we could have hurt ourselves, that the axe handle could have flew off and we'd have been in a lot more, I mean, a a lot bigger of a hole. But in this moment, in this time, we were so worried about what we were doing that we forgot to check the handle. The axe head. Now I wonder, maybe, just maybe, this man, while he was further than the work of God and filling these beams, Brother Luke, maybe he got so caught up in what he was doing that checking the handle did not cross his mind. That checking up every once in a while did not cross his mind. That asking God for help every once in a while did not cross his mind. And slowly but surely that wedge came further and further out as the axe handle got closer and closer to coming off. Here's the key tonight, church. It's this. We can get so caught up in what God is doing that we can miss the checkup in our own lives. All it starts with, let's be real tonight, all it starts with is a week of missing your Bible reading. And that wedge starts coming loose. All it takes is a week of missing your prayer time Without, pray, fair, without faith, prayer, and the word of God, this church would be absolutely nothing. Right. All it takes is a week of that. I, for me, even a couple of days, and I'll start to realize that axe handle's coming loose. The sad reality tonight is this. There's probably a lot of people 
that'll go to church. I'm not saying here at New Beginning. They'll go to church tonight and they'll sit in a church pew just like you. And all they'll have in their hand is a wooden stick with no cutting edge. First of all, we see that there is a pathway to desolation. But not only is there a pathway that leads to desolation, there is a, a pity in the midst of desolation. When that desolation is hit and the axe head comes off, there is a pity that sits in. This man, I, I often wonder, brother, brother, brother Keith, I, I often wonder, maybe, maybe, just maybe, as soon as this axe head fell off, surely he noticed that the head had fell off. But what if he didn't? I mean, surely you would know that the head fell off. But maybe, just maybe, he got so caught up in the motions, doing what he always done. Y'all listening to me now? Maybe he got so caught up in doing what he'd always done that when the axe head fell off, all he was doing was beating a tree with a stick. All he could do, the desolation that is set in, was the fact that he could get absolutely nothing done. But all he could sit there and do, he could try to do the work like everybody else was doing. But all this man could do, now that the axe head had fallen off, now that the cutting edge was no longer there, was he could sit there and beat a tree until it was bruised. He could beat the tree until he was blue in the face. But there would be no results. There would be no change. There would be no felling of beams because there was no cutting edge on the end of his handle this evening. And there are churches, let's be real about this thing, We know, y'all know just as well as I do, there are churches that every week all they do is go to the house of God, God forbid, and beat trees with a stick. Here's the thing, we don't have to be that way as the people of God at New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church. We don't have to come to church on Sunday morning and there not be no prayer and no power and no authority. And it seems as if we always leave the same way that we came. There's no difference. There's no transformation. And there's no change. But we can tonight. We can be a part of something where we can leave this place different than we came. We can be a part of something where sinners can hear the, the true prayer, the true gospel of Christ and experience the presence and power of God and leave different than they came. But tonight, some, by some of the people of God at New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church, they have to devote within, we have to devote within ourselves that we'll keep a look on that axe handle, that we'll make sure that the wedge stays driven, that we'll keep a look in our own lives so that we as the people of God don't have to beat a tree with a stick every week of our lives. Amen. Let's be real about it tonight. Your family will not last if all, you, all, you, all you're a part of is beating trees with sticks. My family will not last. One day by God's grace, I'm, can I be real with y'all? I'm just a real preacher. I, I just want to be real, 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 as real as I can. Y'all heard Pastor Daniel say it the other day. By God's grace, God's doing some big things. And, and, and I, I plan on, on getting married this year by God's grace, Lord willing. God allows that. And here's the, here's the reality of it all. And I mean this in pure humility and as selfless as I can possibly be. But one day by God's grace, Brother Luke, when I get married, me and my wife are traveling and going over and preaching the gospel of Christ and doing what God's called me to do. When we come to New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church, after being in a lot of places where all we've seen is people beat trees with sticks, I want to be able to come to a place Amen. where there's a cutting edge. Amen. God's doing a work and my family can feel that. My family can see that. I want my children to see the real presence and the real power of God. I want my wife, I want my family to see the real presence and the power of God. But the only way that we'll be able to see that accomplished is if we keep check on the axe handle tonight. The danger of losing the axe handle, first of all, is the desolation. Then we see number two, the desperation. 
Lucy, I'm going to go through this real quick. I don't want to tell you it won't be long at all tonight. The desperation, this man, the desperation was the fact in verse number five, this man did not even own the axe head that he was swinging. It was borrowed. The greatest tragedy in this whole story was the fact that the axe head that he lost was not even his to start with. But it had been gifted to him. It had been given to him. John chapter 3 verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Psalm 62, verse number 11, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Do you realize tonight that the devil could not even touch Job until God gave him the power and the authority to do so? The biggest tragedy in this whole story was the fact that the axe, hand, the axe head this man lost didn't belong to him to start with. Do you realize tonight that the axe head at New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church does not belong to us? Amen. The axe head in your life, as God uses you where you work and some of you men of God as you preach, that axe head does not belong to us, but it belongs to the Lord. It is a gift and it is a calling. God has placed on us. Every week there are thousands of men of God, people of God, that watch that live stream and they see what God's doing and it encourages them that God's still moving and God's still working and God's still doing a great work. But if we lose that axe head, what will it do for them? If there's any reason why we should keep a check on the axe head tonight, it's because if we lose it, it didn't belong to us in the first place. There's a desperation that takes place. It's been borrowed. God has given us a great gift and a great opportunity. We must not take advantage of that tonight, dear people of God. We see the desperation. I'll give you this real quick. I'm trying to get out of the way, I promise. Number three, then we see the determination. See, here's the thing tonight. God forbid that the axe head ever be lost in our own personal lives or at the church. But if it ever is, we can get it back. Amen. Some of you tonight have come into this place and you might, just, you might have just came in with a stick and a handle. But here's the thing tonight. You can leave with that axe. Here's why. We see, first of all, the determination. Verse number six, notice this. And the man of God said, Where fell it? He showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. First of all, we see the fetching. Though, though this man has lost his axe head, he has the opportunity to get it back. But in order to get it back, it will cost him something. It will not be free. In order to get this cutting edge, he will, he will have to plead to his master first. Then he will have to pay a great price on top of that. The cost of losing the power of God that God has entrusted us with will not be a bargain. Sometimes it will cost a pretty penny. I, I do not want to know what it would cost us with the power and the authority that God has entrusted us with at this church. With the power and the authority that God has entrusted us with at this church. I would not want to know what the cost would be to get it back if it was lost. Because realistically that cost would be a lot more than I think some of us would be willing to pay. We see the fetching in the scripture. Then we see the fixing in the scripture. After one fetches the axe head, he can put it back on the handle, but with some work first. First the handle has to be reshaped. 
The accent has to be put back on. Listen, the wedge has to be driven. And that axe head has to be submerged in water so that wood will swell around that wedge. Do you know what water represents in the Word, in the word of God? It represents the Word of God. And in order to make sure that that axe head stays on that handle, I've done some research on this before I preached it. And I went and I started, I started researching what lumberjacks would do. That's all they ever did was swing their axes to make sure that their handle stayed tight. And this is what they said. They said after every work day, they said they would have at least two or three axes. They said after every work day with one axe, said they would take that axe, they would submerge it in a bucket of water for 24 hours before they would use it again. To give time for that wood to swell and for the axe handle to tighten around that axe head. Tonight I dare to say there are probably some people. You might have come in this place tonight and your axe head may be loose in your personal life. And tonight you just need to submerge that thing in some water. Submerge in the Word of God. I'll tell you a story and I'm done and I'm getting out of the way. Dr. Ray was in Coolidge, Arizona. I've tried my best tonight. I, I wish I could give this to you as God's put it in my heart. I just don't know how. Dr. Ray was in Coolidge, Arizona. He was preaching a revival meeting. While he was preaching that meeting, he began to argue with God about some things in his own personal life. God, had telling him, God was telling him he wanted him to do some, do some stuff and he, he told God that he wouldn't do it. And Brother Ray said that as he, as he argued with God that week, God wanted him to do some things. He didn't really go into detail. He said God took his power off of me. Took his hand off of my life. It's in the book, page 186 if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Ray said, for 45 days, 45 days I lived my life without the power of God and the touch of God on my life. He said, I got up to preach and said, I'd, I'd get up and said, I'd fumble my speech and I'd, I'd try to read my scripture and said, said, I'd try to preach and said, I'd hear people in the back saying, Dr. Ray can't preach no more. He's lost his touch. He said, I'd go to meetings and said, I, I'd get up and I'd try to preach and said, I, I couldn't even get the words out of my mouth. So much desolation. He said, I just have to sit back down and have to go home. He said, for 45 days, it was like that everywhere I went. People saying, Percy Ray can't preach no more. He's lost his touch. He said, and then the Southern Baptist Convention took place. Or this I actually a big missions conference is what he said took place. A lot of those guys from the convention came in there, this big missions conference that he was preaching at. And said when those people came in, Brother Ray was preaching that night, and the night before he was going to get up and preach, he was in his hotel room. He said he got down beside of his bed, and this is what he told God. If you listen to anything I say, listen to this. He said, I told God, Lord. Whatever it takes, God, whatever it costs me, I will do anything. But Lord, I will not get up another day and preach without your power and your touch on my life. Amen. He was saying, I will not get up unless that axe handle is on the end of that, that axe head's on the end of that handle. God did a work for him that night in that motel room. He got up the next day or was getting ready to get up. The choir was singing. He said, I was feeling God in a big way. And he said, the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, Percy Ray, I want you to get up and shout. Now, you've got to understand, Brother Ray told us in his book, he, 
He said all those people there, all those dignitaries, all, all those smart folks, those PhDs and those pedigrees and theology and all these, all these convention guys and all these, you know, they, 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 he, said, he said, Lord, if, if I get up and shout, they're going to think I'm charismatic. They're going to think I'm crazy. God, they're going to think something's wrong with me. Lord, I cannot do this. He said, I, he said, I argued with God and said, Lord, I can't do that. And said, the Lord told him, said, you told me you'd do whatever it cost. It could cost something. Said, you'd do whatever it cost if I put my power back on you. He said, okay, Lord. I said, I'd do whatever it cost. True story. He got up that night. By testimony of those that have read the book and have read the story, he said, I shouted for an hour and 30 minutes. And 116 people professed Christ that night and got converted by the grace of God. But that had nothing to do with an alliterated outline. That had nothing to do with elegant speech. That had nothing to do with, 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 with all the mannerisms and being proper. What that had to do, it had to do with the power of God and the touch of God on one's life to see sinners come to repentance and lives changed for the glory of God this evening. All it took was one, as Brother Keith just said a minute ago, y'all didn't hear him, one simple step of obedience. God put his power, Amen. his touch back on him. I don't know, I don't know where you are tonight. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what your handle looks like. Some of you tonight may have came in here without an axe head on the end of your handle. Some of your axe head may be as tight as it's ever been. And some of you may be loose and in need of some help. Now, I'm not going to come to you and I'm not going to ask you to come pray and ask God to help you with your need. I don't have that burden tonight. But I do know this. You know what God's doing in your life. And you know the need in your life as well as I know the need in mine. I wonder tonight, I'm going to make my way to the piano here in just a moment. I wonder tonight if there's some of you that need that help. Some of you need that water tonight to swell up that wood. Boy, tonight would be a good night to find your place and devote yourself to God that you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that handle. I say it'd be good tonight for the core people of New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church to find themselves a place Say, Lord, God, help us. Lord, without you, we can't do nothing. God, help us. Lord, to make sure that in everything we do, in everything we say, and everywhere we go, God, that as the people of God at New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church, that our axe head would be tight on the end of that handle. You know tonight, I wonder, would you come as we stand all over the house?